Through the first 25 games or so of the 2022-23 season, Indiana Pacers swingman Benedict Matherin was probably second behind Paolo Banquero in the Rookie of the Year race. He ended up finishing fourth for that award behind Paolo, Jalen Williams, and Walker Kessler. Matherin also came in eighth for the Sixth Man of the Year award, which was won by Malcolm Brogdon. For the season, Matherin took the third most shots among all rookies and shot 43.4% overall and 32.3% from three-point range. As the season went on, his efficiency really fell, particularly from long range. In eight October games, he shot a shade under 43% from three-point distance, and in 13 November games, he shot 38.6%. But in December, January, February, and March combined, he shot just 26.4% from downtown. Among all players who took at least 100 threes during that time period, that was the second worst percentage. Interestingly enough, only his Pacers teammate Jalen Smith shot it worse at 25%. So what did Matherin do well throughout the year and what must improve? Well, let's start with his number one strength, and that's his ability to finish through contact at an extremely high level. What's interesting is that initiating contact is also Bancaro's number one strength which I highlighted in the video I did on him recently. Matherin had 54 N1s throughout the year, 13th most in the entire league. As you can see from these clips, he's super strong, especially for someone that was just 20 years old during the season. He drew 222 shooting fouls, which was also 13th most in the league. He draws a lot of his contact close to the basket also. His average shot distance while drawing shooting fouls was 6.2 feet, according to Second Spectrum, 22nd closest in the league among those with at least 100 shooting fouls and fourth closest among guards. Another one of his top strengths is his transition scoring. He loves to fly up and down the floor, and this is often when he shows off his athleticism and explosiveness. He took 213 of his shots in transition, which was 23rd most in the entire league and the most among rookies. He shot 53% on those tries. Indiana ranked number one in the league in total points in transition. Matherin's shooting foul frequency in transition was 23.7%. Among players who took at least 200 shots in transition, that was the second highest mark. Only Giannis Antetokounmpo had a higher mark at 30.2%. A unique skill of his for a backcourt player is his offensive rebounding. He totaled 87 offensive rebounds, which among guards was 7th most. He made 12 putbacks as well. Also different about Matherin is that he shoots threes a little better off the dribble than he does off the catch. He shot 34.9% on 126 pull-up threes. He's got some good variation too. He's got the shake and raise, the step back, and the more standard pull-up all in his repertoire. Many of Matherin's best performances came early in the season. For instance, he erupted for 30 points on November 9th against Denver. In that game, he shot 10 of 17 from the field overall, 6 of 9 from 3-point range, and 4 of 6 from the free throw line. In reviewing this game, I saw a lot of variety. Here he initiates the contact from Aaron Gordon and uses that strength to score the N1. Here you see a couple transition pull-up threes. He also likes to incorporate the shake and raise pull-up, which he does here with Jeff Green and Gordon as his defenders. Here he flies down the floor on the break and slams it home. 
and occasionally you'll see him relocate back to the three-point line and showcase that quick release. As far as weaknesses, for one, he really didn't shoot the ball well off the catch from three-point distance. On stationary catch-and-shoot three-point attempts, he made just 31.7% of his 104 tries, which was 11th worst among players with at least 100 attempts. As I highlighted in the clips from the Denver game, he's a bit better when he relocates for his catch-and-shoot threes. He made 33.3% of his catch-and-shoot relocation threes, but certainly with far fewer attempts, and that's all according to second spectrum. He's really dangerous when he's trailing the play and spots up from long distance in transition. While very aggressive attacking the hoop, he doesn't have great touch and he can get wild. Matherin took 305 driving layups during the year, but only shot 45.9% on them, which was the worst percentage in the league among those with at least 300 attempts and second worst among those with at least 200 attempts according to second spectrum. Only Lou Dort had a worse percentage. Matherin also really struggled with his floater even though he took over 100 of them, he only shot 41.7% on driving floaters, the sixth worst mark among those who took at least 100 of them per second spectrum. In case you're curious, the player who had the worst mark with a minimum of 100 attempts was Keldon Johnson, who made just 34.8% of his driving floaters. Also interesting about Matherin is that he has a tendency to take his floaters from a bit of a further distance. The average shot distance on his floaters was 10.2 feet, according to Second Spectrum, which was the sixth furthest distance among those with at least 100 attempts. Tyus Jones had the furthest distance at 10.8 feet. Another thing I noticed is that he gets blocked a lot. Uh, the data backs that up as well, as he got rejected 84 times, eighth most in the league. Defensively, the Pacers were really poor all year. In fact, they ranked in the bottom 10 in opponent points in the paint, opponent fast break points, opponent second chance points, and opponent points off turnovers. Matherin had some okay flashes defensively, but it remains to be seen how much impact he will make on this end as he develops. As far as players he's similar to, I remember leading up to the draft, some comparing him to Jason Richardson, and I actually think that's a solid comp. J. Rich had that nice blend of athleticism, size, and shooting, and I think Matherin checks those boxes as well. And let's remember, Richardson wasn't that efficient from three-point range early in his career, but then developed more consistency from deep about five years or so into his career. Another player I feel like he's like is J.R. Smith. Smith in his prime was excellent at hitting threes in transition. They also are similar athletically. From a foul initiating standpoint, while this isn't really part of his repertoire anymore, Eric Gordon in his earlier years was very good drawing fouls and finishing through contact. Another player still active that was excellent at this from the shooting guard position a few years back was Alec Burks. So I feel like there's some commonality there with those two. Although I would say Matherin has more bounce than both of them, Gordon is probably a better shooter and Burke's a little craftier. A pie in the sky comp I would say is Mitch Richmond. Richmond was a true three level scorer, had a similar frame that Matherin has, although Matherin again has more bounce, but Richmond had incredible touch from all areas of the floor and was really strong and sturdy. He became one of the league's premier three point shooters by the mid to late 90s. Just some general stats on Matherin. In 78 games, he averaged 16.7 points, 4.1 rebounds, 1.5 assists, 0.6 steals, and 0.2 blocks, shooting 43.4% from the field overall and 32.3% from three-point range. So that'll wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe.